I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn about multi-camera sequences in Adobe Premiere. I normally try and keep the channel pretty focused on, you know, the core of what I do, FPV, product reviews, builds, etc. Uh, but every so often, I'd like to do a behind the scenes to show you some of the tips and tricks of, of how I produce videos. And I know at least a few of you are interested. So if you're the kind of person who's who does video editing with Premiere, then this video is going to be super. This is a really cool feature. And if you're not the kind of person who does video editing with Premiere, then uh, maybe tomorrow's video will be more your speed. Stay tuned. Multi-camera sequences in Premiere are an easy way of editing when you're in the situation where you've got more than one camera or, or audio track that's recording the same event at the same time. So for example, uh, if you're a YouTuber like me and you're doing a build, maybe you have one camera that's recording your head, your face, and another camera that's recording your, your, your bench where you're building the quadcopter. Or the situation that I'm in right this exact minute where I've got one camera that's recording me and another that's recording the desktop. Well, it's not a camera, but it's a screen recorder. It's recording the desktop. After you get back into, into the studio to do the editing, it can be really tedious to cut back and forth between those and multi-camera sequences make it really super easy you know another time when multi-camera sequences are useful uh, if you're doing uh, hd video and dvr video from your quadcopter at the same time uh, or if you are doing any kind of test or shootout if you're a minor youtuber like myself you've got three or four different cameras or something right and you've all recorded them at the same time these are all times when a multi-camera sequence is super super powerful so let me show you how it works so if we take a look over here in my project pane you'll see i've already imported the files for this project and uh, one of them is a gopro i call it gopro headshot it is my my head talking while i do the review uh, and the other is the bench video, which is the camera shooting down at the bench. And you'll notice, by the way, that I have two GoPro files, but only one bench file. And the reason for that is that the GoPro file got too big and the GoPro split it. It splits it at, I'm not sure, I think two gig is the size. I could be wrong. But you'll see, that it turns out that doesn't even matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one and control click to select the other two. And I'm going to right click and choose there we go. Create multi-camera source sequence. Now, when you create a multi-camera sequence, uh, there are various ways that you can have Premiere sync up the clips. The idea is that these clips are all taken at the same time and they need to be synced up. One way it can sync them up is by looking at the audio. So if you've got a microphone on the GoPro recording and you've got a microphone on your other camera recording at the same time, it will analyze the audio tracks and it will sync them based on that. And that is pretty freaking cool. It's so cool that, in fact, if you've got a whole bunch of different clips, if you've got clips from here and clips from there, it will just go through them all and match them pretty, pretty darn well if they've all got the same audio on them. Uh, and so you could end up with, you know, take one bench headshot, take two bench headshot. You don't need to think about which is which. Just grab them all, select them all, do right click, make multi camera sequence, and it will figure out how they match up. And that's pretty darn cool. The other thing you can do though, if you don't have, like, let's say it's DVR video, so there's no audio, there's no usable audio in, in the DVR. Uh, but you want to sync up your DVR video and your high def video. You can do that based on the endpoints or based on a marker that you place on the track. So you would go into the clip and you would find a point to a sync point, like the moment when you arm the quad, and you would put a marker there and you can sync based on that. But syncing based on audio is the single coolest way to do this. Uh, then I'm going to leave all this alone exactly how I want it. Let's see, sequence audio. I want the audio to follow camera one. You can also have the audio switch. So if you've got if you've got two different cameras, for example, uh, two a GoPro and a Runcam 3, and when you switch between the video, you want the audio to switch along with it so the viewers can hear the difference in the audio, then that you would use switch audio. But in this case, I'm going to have the audio stay with camera one the whole time because camera one is the one recording the actual audio from the mic that I had. That's the good audio, and that's the one I want to always be using. So then that's it. Just audio and go. Processing and 
boom. What we end up here is a new sequence. Uh, it's got a special little icon here that indicates it's a multi-camera sequence and it's tagged with multi-cam. So uh, I'm actually going to rename that. I'm going to right-click the main sequence, multi-camera sequence, and choose open in timeline. And what it's done, you can see here is, here's the bench camera, right? There it is. But then it's also put the individual headshot cameras too uh, in there. And you can see here's part one, and then here's where the GoPro started the second file. Uh, so uh, I'm actually going to clean this up. Each of these tracks is going to be treated as a separate camera when we start the editing process. But in fact, these two are the same camera. It's just two different files. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that up onto that. No, 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 no. I'm going to select that and drag it up there. And I'm going to select the audio for that and drag it down here. And then I'm just going to delete that track. Delete track and delete the corresponding audio track. So now, so now what we've got is we've got the two cameras and the audio is perfectly synced. And by the way, if I, I don't know what audio it has chosen to go with here. Hang on. Let me do, check this out. Both of the audios are muted. I'm not sure why that is. Let's unmute the audio and just check about some frames today. Frames today are getting smaller and smaller. You can see they're really well synced. So which audio do I want to keep? Later, later. And that's fine, but they... Here's something that really annoys me. No, that's the GoPro audio. We don't want that. Here's something that really annoys me about... Okay, that's the good audio. Okay, so now this is ready to go. Then how do you work with it? Well, what you do is you're going to drag it onto a new sequence. And you can see now when I drag it onto a sequence, as opposed to doing right-click, open in timeline, now it just shows up as a single clip. And if I go to... If I turn on multi-camera view, which you, if you're not going to see that by default, you're going to go here... And you're going to find the button here in the button editor and drag it down. You're going to turn on multi-camera view. It's going to show you both of the cameras. Right? Hello. There we go. And then what you can do is you can either click between them while you play back. Or you can press the numbers 1 and 2 to switch between them. So watch how this would work. Here's something that really annoys me about frames today. They're getting smaller and smaller, lighter and lighter. And they're getting harder and harder to build and doing a worse and worse job of protecting their contents. Uh, they do an okay job of protecting the stack, although sometimes it's really challenging to get the stack to fit in the gosh darn frame. Uh, but then a lot of them hang the stack off the end of the, uh, of the front. Yeah, so I did some bouncing back and forth between the cameras there just to, just for the sake, you know, just to show you how I was doing. I was just pressing the numbers one and two to switch the cameras, and you can see now here, it's put cuts in and it switched the cameras, you see? So when I play back, it's a worse job of protecting their contents. Uh, they do an okay job of protecting the stack, although sometimes it's really challenging to get the stack to fit in the gosh darn frame. Uh, but then, there you go. Okay, so this is a really complicated and powerful feature that I have only just scratched the surface of. And I, my goal here is not to teach you all about how to use it, but just if you're the kind of person who is going to get some use out of this, right now you're just salivating and you want to know more. So just go to YouTube or go to the internet and search for Premiere Multi-Camera Sequence and you'll find more tutorials and you can shake a stick at as to how to do this. Uh, if you are not the kind of person who <laughs> does this kind of stuff, then uh, sorry for boring you for 20 minutes. But there you go. Uh, I, I put out a lot of videos, so I hope you can uh, indulge me in a few of behind-the-scenes ones for stuff like this. Thanks for watching, and happy happy editing. Happy vlogging. <laughs>